Hello everyone, this is Greg, and Amy and I just finished watching a movie called Loving, and um, it was about the people Mildred and Richard Loving, their name L-O-V-I-N-G, and <clears throat> pretty much their love story that changed America. And so um, we're going to reference an article um, called, um, an article by Bryn Holland, um, written in February 17, 2017. And um, pretty much it talks about the relationship of Richard and Mildred um, loving or family friends who fell in love, got married, and had had a family. But in the 1950s, Virginia, their relationship wasn't that simple. Richard was white and Mildred was black. And in the eyes of the state's anti-misegregation law, segregation law, they were committed a felony. I see. So what we did, we watched this movie and we found out how a couple of in Love brought forward the landmark case Loving versus Virginia, which forever changed the color of marriage in the United States. See, um, we watched this movie, and um, Amy likes to watch these really like intense movies that are real-to-life, true-to-life. I like to watch more sci- um, sci-fi, um, not real-to-life movies. And it's like, doesn't make us, like, you know, um, have different perspectives on different things, you know? And it's also, the the reason why this this movie was important um, to us is because it's uh, interracial marriage. And, you know, by looking at our picture that we are an interracial marriage couple. Um, Amy um, Amy's here, and um, she'll be able to tell you some stuff as well. And um, I just wanted to say a couple things. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy. Amy Valentine. I'm married to Greg Valentine. We got married in 2002, June 22nd, 2002. Yep. And we've been married this summer will be 16 years. So this movie, I wanted to see this movie because I know that the anniversary of this time where, you know, Supreme Court ruled in the favor of Richard Loving and Mildred. Mildred and... Uh, it's an important day because it changed the law for everyone that uh, were interracial, fell in love, and wanted to get married and have children, have a family. So uh, I think Greg was going to continue to read the article. Oh, um, I, I could read the article or just take a couple of blurbs from him. Um, what happens is that you have a couple of... Um... Um, you have a couple of article, a couple of pieces from the article that I wanted to just read about. Um, see, the um, they lived in Virginia, and and the, the, the state laws in Virginia outlawed their marriage. They actually decided to. Um, I'll, 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 in the article that was written here on the History Channel, uh, History dot com, <clears throat> it says um, that there was um, a question was asked. Um, let's see, pretty much um, there. It says, there was a, it says, what, it says, there was, uh, there, it's written in the article, what are you doing in bed with this woman? Sheriff R. Garnett Brooks asked as he shone his flashlight on a couple in bed. It was 2 a.m. on July 11th, 1958, and the couple in question, Richard Loving and Mildred Jetter, had been married for five weeks. I'm his wife, Mildred responded. The sheriff, who had, was acting on an anonymous tip, didn't relent with his questioning. Richard was an, of Irish and English descent. And Mildred of African American and Native American descent, <clears throat> and according to state law, it was a crime for them to be married. They were arrested for violating Virginia's um, Virginia's Racial Integra- Integrity Act. The Lovings first met when Mildred was eleven and Richard was seventeen. He was a family friend, but their dating courtship didn't begin until later years. Growing up about three or four miles apart, they were raised in a relatively mixed community that saw themselves as a family regardless of race. Often coming together over music and drag racing, it was not uncommon for the people of different races to intermingle, work together, and sometimes date. Richard and Mildred dated on and off for a couple of years before they decided to get married after Mildred became pregnant. The Lovings traveled to Washington, D.C. to marry, where interracial marriage was legal, and it was the nation's capital that they would later return to when they were forced to leave their home. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, let's see, Leaving behind their family and friends, the Lovings attempted to make a life in Washington, D.C., but they never felt at home. Mildred did not adapt to the city life well. Well, she was a country girl who was used to the rural area where there were room for kids to play. Wanting to see her family, the Lovings would defy the court order to periodically return to Virginia. As they were not allowed to return together, they would take precautions not to be seen together in, in Virginia. 
Richard offered often never venturing outside the house. Let's see, um in the backdrop of the loving struggle, the civil rights movement was taking root. While the Lovings were too preoccupied with their own uh, own hardships to be involved, they were inspired by the activism they saw. In 1964, Mildred wrote to Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy for help. Kennedy told her to contact the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, lawyers Bernard S. Cohen and Philip J. Hershop uh, eagerly took the case. Um... Let's see. Um, their first attempt at justice was to have the case vacated and the ruling reversed by the original judge. After waiting almost a year for a response, they brought a class action suit to U.S. District Court of the Eastern District of Virginia, which finally elicited a response from Judge Basil. Uh, he stated, Almighty God created the races white, black, yellow, Malay, and red, and he placed them on separate continents. And But for the interference with his arrangement, there would be no cause for such marriages. The fact that he separated the races showed that he did not intend for us races to mix. This prejudice field response provided the grounds for the appeal to the Supreme... The Supreme... Uh, okay, the Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals. But the court upheld the original ruling. Mm. Let's see. By this time, the Lovings were secretly living together in Virginia. They considered staying, separate, sep- considered staying separately with their own families, but on the advice of their lawyers, they remained together, only after being assured that even if arrested, they would only be held for a couple of hours with the ACLU on call to assist with with, uh, with the release. The um, What was interesting about this story was, like, you know, in terms of our relationship, Amy and my relationship, um, our relationship would not have been able to happen had it not for, been for this one here. Right. And so there's an aspect of it, like, had they not succeeded, we would not have been able to get married ourselves. So this is a very, like, monumental in the case of our relationship. And so they were granted, just kind of skipping ahead a little bit, they, was, um, they, were, they did not go to the court, but, um, but because they, they were, there were certain things that were being said that they would not, you know, want to hear, but they were granted, they actually was heard by the Supreme Court, which is very rare because usually the Supreme Court doesn't listen to, to these different cases. But on this one, they were willing to listen. And on June 12, 1967, the laws ban interracial marriage were deemed unconstitutional. Over, overturned them in 16 states. Mm-hmm. Here's something interesting. Although Alabama would only repeal its anti segregation law in 2000. So based on this decision on the Due Process and Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. So it took, um, you know, see, it was uh, 1967 is when the laws were all banned, but in in Alabama, it they was um year 2000. Back. They wanted to, they didn't they flip it, it until still. Alabama, you know. Yeah. Interesting. These convictions, um, <clears throat> so what happens is like our relationship, during the time when Amy and I got into our relationship, there was, um, there was during a time of, um, you know, you have it where, uh, President Bush, uh, um, 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 W, W, um, <laughs> George, Bush. George W. Bush, you know, Junior. Junior. He was um going for president. There was a time where he actually went to the um Supreme. Um, he was on the Bob Jones. Bob Jones. Uh, I, I mean, I'm you tell it. You know better. Uh, you know, George Bush went to Bob Jones University, which is a very, uh, very fundamental, uh, Christian university. And, um, basically he went there to talk to them and, you know, on his campaign trail. And because he went there, it opened up, uh, a box of confusion uh, because Bob Jones University still wouldn't let a whites and black state. So then Larry King, basically what I observed uh, during that time, Larry King had Bob Jones, I don't know what number Bob Jones it was, the third, the, I don't know who it was, but they had the the son of Bob Jones there. Bob Jones III? Yeah, third. Like yeah. The third. And basically, they had him grilled. Larry King was grilling him, saying, you know, here you had uh, George Bush on the campaign trail at your college, and you still don't like let black and whites date. On your college campuses. On your college campuses. And what do you say about that? All of a sudden, oh, we changed the policy. Mm-hmm. We're going to allow that to happen. So this is like 1999, and um, 
you know, 2000. And basically, you know, during that time, Greg and I, um, I had graduated from this Bible school. And then also Greg was attending uh, that same Bible school. And we were having this happen. Bush, <coughs> Bob Jones, and then Larry King talking to um, Bob Jones. And it was just very interesting. Um, and then we were told also to, because Greg and I were um, so trying to become uh, supported missionaries. Yeah. And we were told by the higher ups, basically, support Rays separately. Yeah. We were told you better support Rays separately because, you know, churches and people, you know, are not going to like the whole thing about interracial dating or interracial wanting to get married and um you know so basically support race separate you know greg would support race as a black man to different churches and i would support race as a white woman to different churches and we wouldn't we would let people know we're engaged or at that point not engaged but dating but we wouldn't be seen together in churches um, we didn't go along with that idea. Um, we we were thought that was we thought that was kind of like backwards. a um, uh, idea of hiding, and I feel as though the Bible says the, the the wicked flee when no one pursues them, and also the Bible says you know pretty much whatever is you know exposed, whatever is you know of light will be of light. You're you're like a we weren't doing anything you're wrong. You're like um, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Okay, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like you know. Um, why are we hiding for something that we want to do? You know, we, we, we wanted to do the ministry. We wanted to be out there and to be able to tell people about Jesus and wanted to be able to do, and our ministry was, um, we did outdoor preaching type ministry and we were able to present and talk to people and on the streets of different places, different cities. And in New York was one of them. And what happened was like, you know, we had opportunity to do this and we here in New York, it's a very cosmopolitan city. We have a lot of people who will hear us, you know, because we are a black and white couple. But, you know, rest of the nation, um, maybe not so much. And so we weren't able to raise our support, unfortunately. Our support never got past um, 20%. And um, we did a lot of visiting of churches and talked to a lot of people. Unfortunately, we weren't able to raise our support. So we, we don't know to this day if it was because of our interracial, um, our, our, our fact that I'm black and Amy is white. We didn't know that. God knows. Uh, we know that. People won't be honest about. Yeah, that. we we there's no way for us to be able to tell whether or not it is or not. But we know that one thing that the, that never said that, it to our face. They never said to our face, and those who did support us, you know, we we were of the mindset that if we had did what they told us to do and support ourselves um, individually, like got our, our support raised by ourselves, like me as a black person raising and Amy as a white person raising, you know, what would happen is that. There'd come a day when we get together that they would either continue supporting or or not, and it's kind of a human logic, the whole thing, you know, human logic, man's logic, and the Bible says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean on your understanding, all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path." So it's like you know, if we try to do like some kind of slight trickery to get people to to support us, when they find out the truth, they're gonna be upset. So you know, one of the things like you know, like boldly, yeah. So it's better to boldly tell, and better be just just to say it. Than to, than to be, you know, cowardice and, and make up some kind of like, you know, um, some kind of a situation where you're you're not telling because you're afraid of what's going to happen, you know, and that's not that's not right. So we were willing to just be all right with it, you know, and not to be afraid. And so, I mean, we were willing to get married in front of people. We didn't elope or nothing like that. We didn't go married in Vegas or nothing. We got had a wedding, you know, we let people know. We posted our pictures. You know, we weren't afraid because, you know, we love each other. And in this case with them, in their situation, they had to do a lot of hiding for the people in, um, for Mildred and Richard uh, Loving, which is kind of weird, you know, our names, you know, our names is Valentine and their names is Loving. Yes. And that's really kind of funny and interesting at the same time. Yes. Because, you know, the, um, this is, you know, just the way it is. And we got married around the same time of their, so our, our marriage is in the 22nd, June 22nd. And their, their victory was, um, June 12th, 19, uh, 1967. So that's just amazing to think about that, you know. And also, it's weird that only recently, you know, a lot of things have changed in society in terms of mindsets and things. 
but when you think about like how you know how how short of a time it was it's it's like 40 you know 40 50 years ago you know that's just i know that these things have changed right you know and so it's like one of those things where it's like you know we we can walk through the streets of new york and hold hands you know and be together and we have our our, our mixed kids you know um, as we walk through and it's just like just think about that how we could do that and how years before that just just not even 50 years ago how it was like such oppression and i also wanted to talk about how you know he said such things about you know he used god as an example to to um separate people and that's not you know what we believe as as christians we believe that god brings people together because you know there's one part in the bible talks about the tower of babel and the reason why they got separated was because they wanted to do something they wanted to unite themselves and make a name for themselves as a one people and get charged the heavens really they wanted to get up into the beyond the firmament and to get up there and to just mess with everything but god said you know what? i'm going to separate you all and he separated them in different groups but then you have the pentecost the day of pentecost in the bible where he brings everybody back together you know and he shows that you know what it doesn't matter if you're jewish or you're or you're a gentile or you're a greek or a barbarian he says we're all humans you know and it shows that you know when a person comes to christ as a savior you know we're all part of a family and the body of christ so that's where it's really awesome and so that's why that's why like the christian church should lead from the front in terms of, like really um interracial relationships and things like that because what supposed happens to. Is, supposed to and usually what happens is that we should kind of lead from behind usually after the catholic church catholic church does stuff first but like but christian church kind of second in terms of stuff you know we get involved in things that really shouldn't be well, or things that should be but we get involved in it later after everybody else kind of like you know so in well, this like, case okay, no just saying in this case you know this is one of those things where you know we can win with love the bible says you'll know them if they have love for one another and love is something that's sacrificial and truth telling and concerned and willing to help and also it's it's real and that's where it's like you know when jesus died on the cross for our sins he rose again to conquer death and also to give us a new life in christ you know give us a new life in him that we're that when we get to heaven it's not based upon the stuff we've done but all the stuff he did like when he's on the cross it's finished it's finished it was finished on the cross all the work to get to god but also now we have a new relationship with him that we can have great relationship with one another you know anyway so Amy, what were you gonna say well i was just saying that um you know basically it's very important when people get together if they're from different nationalities that their their family approves it you know like they love each other but then they have to you know have the family like them if you possibly can you know when i first told my dad my dad was like oh why do you have to go that way meaning interracial you know but because my dad came from indiana and maybe he was more towards just white people or whatever and i don't know uh i think that when he said that i felt like you know we just need to prove it to him that greg is a really great guy and he would make a really good uh husband and father and from what i could see and his, you know, the way he was and his morals and as a Christian and just the way he had a relationship with me and respectful and everything. So I thought, you know what, dad, maybe you don't know black people, um, very well or, but this, this guy is a great guy. He's a gem. And basically I had to kind of tell my dad and I had my, my husband, well, Greg, you know, when he was um, wanting to en get engaged with me, he basically asked permission from my dad, which my, you know, that's kind of old fashioned, that's nice, it's respectful. Yeah. And you know, my dad liked that. And my dad said, yes, you can have, you can have her hand in marriage. Uh, I think that's very good. Okay. So my dad met Greg and you know, and basically, you know, we try to go through those kind of like uh, hoops of trying to have approval. And then yep. Greg's mom and dad, they met me many times. Yeah. And they seem to really like me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, sometimes they'll come around and cook a meal and, you know, and they would really like that and I'll serve them. And, 
you know, I met Greg's siblings, you know, his three sisters, and he was kind of a little nervous, you know, like, oh, you can have his sister-in-laws, you know. But they, they said to Greg, oh, she's really nice, and I think she's a good girl, and, and everything like that. And, and the brother-in-law was like, well, you guys should get together. These guys would be good. Yep. So we didn't get any, you know, flack from Greg's family. And, um, and really, uh, any flack that I got from my family was not really anything about interracial you know, it was just other attitudes, basically. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just, I just really think it's very important. Um, I remember one time, uh, when, with this, with this, uh, mission agency that I was going to be with, and I ended up going with, um, when I was in their interview process, uh, they just were, you know, really, really, really focused on basically me, you know, having a relationship with Greg, you know, black and white, black and white. There were all, all these people, that's all they kept thinking about when I would have an interview, that's uh, their questions would go to, what about you and Greg? And what about, you know, when you have children and all this, I was like, what in the world is this such a big deal? Mm -hmm. really okay yeah. come on this is like year 2000 you know 1999 2000 and you're giving me what why why are you doing this so i remember that like i was like well maybe maybe greg and i we should should break up you know for now and they get back together after this time this interviewing process you know like what in the world like what do you want me to you know yeah so, we were like no nah, we're not doing that we're not, we're not being deceptive in yeah that, it's you know? like I was like, no. And then there was times where we had to fight for our right to um, get engaged. Yeah. We had to fight, you know, just different things. Like, I just, this movie, you know, I just, I'm very thankful because I, the aspect of black history and, you know, people and white people not getting along and, and, and white people being mean to black people. And I just think, like, I, I show my children the history. And I'm just like, wow, you know, like, we've come a, lot, a long way. Yes. In the sense of rights and, you know, and knowing that marriage is a fundamental human right. You know, to be able to get marry whoever you want to marry in, in regards to, you know, who is good in God and everything. And, um, you know, I just think I, and I thankful that I know a couple, a husband and wife, black and white couple, and they could not get it out of their head Yeah, that it was okay to have children. So they didn't. Oh, they... we won't have children. How could you have children? You're being black and white. How could you have children? We could never have children and put our children through such suffering of, you know, being black and white and being called bad names and everything. And they were like, um, I'm sorry, but I'm getting married and I'm going to have children with my husband and yeah. we're going to have a happy family. And, you know, and I could say we've only had things happen behind the scenes that we don't know of. Right. And we we're... also had doors open that we didn't know of either. Yes. You know, we think of the stuff that closed, but it's like sometimes, you know, we look at one way. And we say, okay, this is not going to be, we hope it will open this way, but it ends up opening that way. I mean, as you're saying. So, you know, there's things where people have done stuff, and I wonder, hmm. Because eventually, uh, we were support raising with this mission organization, and um, they basically, at this point, they, our support raising wasn't getting high enough. And they, they said, hey, you know, what do you see? What do you foresee happening? And what do you think is going to happen? And we were like, well, God will open the doors and we'll keep going. We'll keep proceeding. And um, they eventually just let us go. We we're, were released. We're, ministry. We failed to raise our support. And I, I said, oh, my goodness. Like, you know, I didn't go into the ministry to serve the Lord for me to get fired uh, from the situation because of failure to to raise support. Exactly. So I I don't know what happened there. 
and I still don't. It's very confusing. Yeah, that that, that, that baffled us for so many years because, because it was like, here you are. My life is dedicated to, do to ministry. Yes. And you can't do ministry because of money. And it was like, you kind of get trained a little different than how you... Because, you know, when I grew up, it was always the mindset of, you know, God will provide for you. Yes. And that's saying that he didn't provide for us in this case, just that that it would be a shoo-in. So you don't think about money. You don't think about the whole money aspect. You just keep doing it. You, and you just serving, keep doing it. You tell people about it. You keep serving God. You keep going you know, and, and talking, and, 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 and eventually it'll all fall into place, you know, somehow. But it didn't happen that way. Yeah, we it were just we were didn't let go shortly way. after we got married. Um, but two years later. Yeah. And In we 2004, go, 2004. We don't know what, you know, we don't know... Yeah, you know, what we did, because you know what? There's people in that mission agency that never, ever, ever had full support. Yeah. And and they're whiteies. They're white people. And I'm like, what happened? Why? What happened with the these people that are white? And then you have Greg and I are black and white. And I just say, what in the world? So... This movie is an encouragement because they fought for the right to get married. <coughs> and they fought to have the right to be able to have a family together. Yes. And not be going in jail and not have be harassed by police or whoever wants to harass them. And, you know, you had the George W. Bush Jr. You had, you had the Bob Jones. You had... All this situation where people had to change their thinking. You know, they had been, in in a sense, been thinking all this way badly. You know, not allowing blacks and whites to be together. And, um, but it still goes on. You know, it still goes on in different ways. But because we live, live in a city, a city-like situation, we don't really... I don't remember. One time, I remember I was sitting on the stoop, sitting on the steps, and a and a guy came, a black guy came down uh, the street, and he was basically like, "Oh, you must hate white uh, black people," and he was like, I think he was kind of drunk or something, but he was like, "Well, you must hate black people," and I was like, uh, "No, I don't hate black people," and. He's like, oh, you must do it. And he started kind of yelling at me. I'm kind of getting a little scared. And then I told him, I'm married to a black man. Then he's like, oh, okay. So obviously, <laughs> I don't hate black people. And, and I'm married to a black man. And I have black and white children. And so the guy left. Yeah. <laughs> that, that situation. But <clears throat> I just, you know... You know, God knows why he put Greg and I together. And God knows why he put the loving family together. Yeah. And they had a beautiful family. They don't, All they wanted, the simplicity of anybody that gets married to the love of their life. The simplicity of getting married, having a happy marriage, establishing a beautiful home, happy and peaceful, and having children together if they want to, and raising that family, having a job, paying your bills, having peace in your home. No matter what color you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. So that's that's the simplicity of what they wanted. And eventually they were able to be by their family, mm -hmm. and they were able to win this this big gigantic court case that determined a lot for everybody else. It's like they were the ones that helped almost all these other people to not be in trouble with the law because they loved each other. If they're black and white, I just you know I think yeah. that's a beautiful thing, and I really it's a very good story. I really you know they didn't want to necessarily be the poster children for black and white interracial couple, but they ended up being. And, um, you know, I think, what, what? Oh, it's like, like, it's, it's good. Huh? Keep going, keep going. Oh, so I just, you know, God knows what's happened with Greg and I's life. And God knows, and thank God that God helped them to win the court case that would change our life and our children. I've never really 
they've never experienced anybody saying anything to them about them being mixed. I, so I'm glad for that too. So that's all I have to say. I really liked the movie. I really loved the way he loved his wife and how he said basically he wasn't going to go to the Supreme Court, but he said, I love, tell the judge, tell the judges, I love my wife. And he wasn't going to divorce her for convenience or anything like that. He was, he loved his wife. And you know, Greg, in our wedding day, Greg said how he loved me. And he says, I will never divorce you. Say it, Greg. Never divorce you. Never divorce you. I repeat, I'll never divorce you. See, Greg, Greg proved that day that he loved me. Are you, baby? I love you, too. And that he was going to be with me. And thank you. And God bless everyone. All right, and um, one last thing, the um, I want to say this really quick. There's an official celebration on June 12th called Loving Day, honoring the anniversary of Supreme Court decision of and multiculturalism. Loving versus Virginia declared anti-miscegenation laws to be illegal across the United States, but perhaps even more importantly, it's a legacy of an everlasting love, a love that tri 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 triumphed even in the face of persistent hate. That's all I had to say. Mm. Um, thank you for listening to our, um, our our message, and you know, just leave some comments below about what th thoughts you think on this whole matter of interracial dating and interracial relationship. Interracial relationship. Um, thank you again for listening, and have a good day. But wait, we are God made humans, Adam and Eve, first man and woman. Okay, so we're all a part of the human race. race. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't buy all this stuff where we're all this different, all kinds of different things, and we are all one race, human race. Amen. All right, thank you, and have a good day. All righty, all right, bye. Peace. Peace. Like and subscribe. Hello, everyone. This is Greg, and Amy and I just finished watching a movie called Loving, and um, it was about.